There have been a lot of test matches which have made us wonder if 4 day test cricket is really the right way to move forward. Considering cricket's most epic test matches have more often than not gone to the 5th day in the final hour. If it was Kushal Pereira pulling it off for the Lankans in South Africa, then more recently Ben Stokes also pulled off a heist at Headingley against the Australians. Welcome to the 10th episode of our podcast, Cricket Unadulterated. I am Abhishek Ambulkar. Atisham and Manjeet have joined me for a discussion on yet another fascinating topic, Test Cricket's Most Epic Finishes. Hello guys, hope you are doing well. Hi Abhishek and a warm greetings to all our listeners. Hi Abhishek, hello Manjeet and as Manjeet said, a warm greetings to all our listeners. So today as Abhishek clearly mentioned, we will be talking about epic test finishes now. The most recent and phenomenal two run chases were mentioned by Abhishek, that was by Ben Stokes and Kushal Pereira. Now, Sri Lanka were set a target of 304 runs against South Africa in South Africa on a fast track in Durban. And this guy from Sri Lanka, he scored 153 of them. 153 runs of 304 required. And the most epic thing about it was he made a partnership of 76 runs with the man who came in at number 11 and scored 70 of them. So it was one of the most phenomenal innings while chasing, while chasing in test cricket and it was one of the best. Yes, the Proteas must have been very certain of victory at uh, not just one stage but almost throughout the fourth innings. But then the way Kushal Pereira anchored the innings and uh, of course he kept uh, losing his partners at regular intervals. But the way he batted and uh, stitched on the 76-run uh, partnership, as you mentioned, Atisham, this is something uh, very remarkable. And uh, I don't think uh, we'll get to see a, a similar innings of this uh, grandeur and stature in the near future. This, uh, this one will be remembered for years to come. And actually, it was one of the most epic innings for a reason that it was for the first time that an Asian side went on to win a test series on African soil, on South African soil. India haven't done it yet, Pakistan haven't done it yet, and Sri Lanka were the first team in 2019 to lift the trophy in South Africa, and Kusal Pereira has to be credited for this effort. And the way the fortunes were fluctuating uh, in that test match was really remarkable because uh, South Africa had a very more than decent bowling lineup with Dale Stain, Philander, Rabada, Oliver. Even Oliver performed really well, picking up two wickets in the last innings, but the way Pereira handle the situation after being down and out at 226 for 9 was really incredible. And it was just a tonic which the Sri Lankan cricket needed, which was deteriorating very rapidly and going in the decline. Well, Abhishek, in that same year in 2019, Ben Stokes was not far behind of the feat that Kusil Pereira achieved. Headingly Ashes 2019 England needing more than 300 runs to win and they were down and out at one stage, needing 70 plus runs when the ninth wicket fell. And Stokes pulled out a similar heat as of Pereira. He scored 135 runs and England went on to win the test match by one wicket. Uh, guys, I recently saw one of the best comments uh, on YouTube that uh, someone has uh, commented uh, the guy i don't know his name he has commented that his grandfather often told him about the heroics of sir ian botham whereas uh, his father often told him about andrew flintoff and uh, he has gone on to say that uh, when he uh, will be a father or a grandfather he'll tell his children and grandchildren about ben stokes Yes, Manjit, you rightly said, uh, similar comparisons have been drawn now with uh, Ben Stokes performing that miracle at Headingley. And Sir Ian Botham must have been very proud with that uh, particular performance of Ben Stokes. And uh, there is one more interesting trivia, guys. Uh, the Specs Savers, which was a sponsor for this particular series, has offered Jack Leach lifetime supply of spectacles because uh, his only contribution... Uh, in that fourth innings was a solitary run. As we all know, the stroke of luck has been in favour of England recently. Well, you can say in the 21st century as well. They won the World Cup and we know stroke of luck was very important out there. But talking about test matches, 
I would like to talk about a series that was held in 2009. It was played between England and South Africa in South Africa. It was a four match test series which was drawn 1-1 at the end. But our listeners would be astonished to think or even believe that in three of those test matches South Africa had dominated England completely. And two of those test matches ended up in draws but England were nine down. In one of the test matches, England had to survive 96 overs while chasing 300 plus runs and they did with nine wickets down on the final day. And in another test match in the same series, they had to survive 144 overs chasing 450 plus runs. They did survive and it was also when they were nine wickets down. So these two were epic test matches in that series and I still remember watching them. And Paul Collingwood played a big role in surviving those test matches for England. And series at the end was drawn 1-1. Well, this is one good thing about test cricket that uh, when you are uh, staring at defeat, there is always a chance to draw the match and uh, save some respect for yourselves. Because uh, mostly what happens in other games is that once you start, once the opponent team starts dominating you, then things go really downhill for uh, the team that is on the receiving end. But then in test cricket, there is always this option of uh, playing out the overs, uh, defending your wicket and uh, uh, ensuring that the game ends in a draw and that you lo- that, and that you don't lose the match. Yes, Manjit. And uh, I really like the point which you mentioned here. It is completely not justified if one bad session can cost you the game. Yes, it has happened in the past that one bad session has cost the team the game, but then it is just one of case. But if you are really uh, willing to battle it out for those two or three critical sessions and save the test match for your team, then it's a big achievement for the team. Yes. Talking about battling out, I would like to mention another close match that happened in 2011 in Australia. It was New Zealand versus Australia in Hobart 2011, second test of the two match test series. And New Zealand went on to win the test match by seven runs. Now, the most fascinating thing about this victory was it was their first victory against Australia since 1993. Well, that is 18 years. And it was their first test victory in Australia since 1985. So it was a massive feat that New Zealand achieved in Hobart that year. So guys, we have spoken about uh, one of the games when Sri Lanka managed a wonderful and a remarkable victory against South Africa. Uh, then there was this uh, another match in 2017 between Sri Lanka and Pakistan. Uh, both the first innings were high scoring ones where um, both the teams scored 400 plus. But then uh, in their second innings, uh, Sri Lanka were bundled out for 138. And uh, Pakistan were left with a relatively low target. But then surprisingly, Sri Lanka went on to win the match by 21 runs. And uh, this is really a small margin considering uh, you are playing test cricket. And if you go back to 2006, uh, South Africa tour of Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka managed to chase 352 runs in the final innings. And uh, with just one wicket remaining, it was cool-headed Lasit Malinga who managed to take that single and win it for the Sri Lankan. This chase was architected beautifully by uh, Mahila Jayavardhanya where he scored a century in the last innings in the final innings for Sri Lankans. And talking about run chases, I would like to mention the still record highest run chase that was made by West Indies against Australia in 2003. That was a run chase of 418 runs and West Indies achieved the feat at the loss of seven wickets. Well, it was one of the most famous victories for West Indies. Ram Naresh Sarvan and Shiv Narain Chandrapal were the new entrants and they were hyped to be the next greats of West Indies and both of them scored centuries while chasing this big total and the most fascinating thing about this was Australia were full strength with their bowling lineup with Glenn McGrath, Jason Gillespie and Brett Lee and still West Indies were able to chase down the big score that was uh, in front of them and it was one of the most famous victories and it still stands as highest runches that was ever made in test cricket. So the legendary Brian Lara is not just associated with the highest individual uh, score in test cricket but he was also very much a part of the highest uh, team uh, chase. 
uh, in test cricket so the man is uh, truly a legend well we've talked about this test match from 2003 which west indies eventually won and the period from 2003 to 2005 was very dynamic in australian test cricket setup for the reason that the test captaincy was passed on from steve war to ricky ponting in that time well ponting later went on to captain his first away ashes test series well this test series was famous and has been famous from 2005 for various reasons and it has been touted as one of the most epic ashes series ever well there are many reasons for it you can say a major reason as well for it are the close test matches that took place in that series england went on to win 2-1 and they went on to win ashes after many many years we'll talk about it and we'll talk about the close test matches as well needless to say the 2005 ashes test series is one of the most uh, cherished and remembered by cricket fans all over the globe uh, of course it was a very closely fought tournament and the balance was shifting in uh, both teams favors uh, almost throughout the series but then there is this match the second one which took place at edgbaston in birmingham and uh, imagine uh, there are more than a thousand runs scored in a test match but the one of the teams loses by two runs i mean how narrow a margin is that so um, australia were very very close to chasing england's target and there was a last man kasprovich at the crease and uh, there was an appeal for a caught behind which was uh, given by billy bowden after uh, taking a bit of a time to raise his finger or as we call it the crooked finger and uh, of course there is there is this very iconic photo of uh, andrew flint of consoling the batsman and uh, uh, it's often uh, displayed as a mark of the spirit of the game that uh, how to be modest uh, even in times of uh, victory and uh, particularly during this kind of a victory where you win by two runs so actually had there been uh, a dra system in place maybe the result of not just the match but the entire series could have been different because um, of course the replay showed that uh, the ball brushed the elbow of the batsman it did not take the bat or the glove but then uh, this was uh, as we uh, given the topic of this uh, podcast of this particular episode this is one of the very um, closest uh, victories in test cricket imagine 1000 plus run- runs scored and you lose by two wickets so that must have hurt australia a lot yes if edgbaston was a humdinger uh, then the fourth test match which was played at trent bridge was no less dramatic because australians were in force a follow on and they set up a tricky target of 129 runs to england and and all was going really well for the english side until shane won spun his web of magic and shane won almost pulled it off for the australians in this fourth test So England, when set up a target of 129 runs, although it looks innocuous and a very paltry total of chasing 130, but uh, similarly, uh, it, if we go back to 1981, when the Australians were set up a target of 130 runs, then Bob Willis wreaked havoc and picked up eight wickets and restricted the Australians to just 111 runs. So we talked about the 2005 Ashes and how it was a great series, especially for England. well it acted as a catalyst for the next ashes series that was held in 2009 in england and england went on to win that ashes again by the margin of 2-1 winning the ashes is a no minor feat but saving important test matches is also very important well the first test match of this series is an example of it england went on to win the series 2-1 but the first test match was a draw and england pulled off that draw nine wickets down in the third innings on the final day and gb anderson and monty panesser were the heroes for england on the fifth day so i think we should talk about this test match yes and uh, england batting first scored 435 runs and uh, in reply australia declared at 674 so england the first task for england was to uh, fill the gap the fill the void and uh, Uh, make sure australia were supposed to bat again but then as the close of the fifth day came closer england kept losing wickets and with just one wicket in hand and uh, the deficit still not uh, covered it was a very difficult task for uh, two of england's best bowlers uh, jimmy anderson and monty panesser to ensure of course uh, a victory was out of question but then 
uh, staying put and uh, defending the wicket and uh, making sure australia uh, do not win by an innings uh, this was a very difficult task and uh, it was a miracle that they pulled out and uh, finally the match ended in a draw so as i said earlier in this episode that uh this is one chance that test cricket offers you that uh, if a victory isn't certain that you can still go for a draw and make sure you don't end up on the losing side and after winning that series in 2009 england went on to win three consecutive ashes series one of them was in australia in the season 2010-11 and it was a massive feat but they came back again in england in 2013 and lifted the ashes 3-0 well the first test again in this test series was very close with england winning the test match by just 14 runs i think we should talk about that test match uh, yes atish sharma and uh, this was another high octane uh, match where the fortunes were fluctuating right from one team to the another so 296 that was the score at which australia were finally dismissed and uh, there was only one man which was standing between the victory and defeat and that was brad hadden for the australians but uh, somehow it was the magic of jimmy anderson who picked up five wickets in the second innings which really outclassed the australians in the end yes and uh, actually things could have been much di- much more difficult for australia in the fourth innings had it not been for ashton agar's 98 and uh, who would have thought that uh, a batsman coming in at number 11 will be so close to a century in fact while uh, um, at one point of time it didn't look like australia will take a lead and uh, of course uh, england's first innings was wrapped out for uh, 215 and at one point of time it looked like uh, as if australia were going to be dismissed for an even lower score and uh, that england will get gain the first innings lead So that's when Ashton Agar came out of nowhere and scored 98 uh, very valuable runs, and uh, Australia were the ones who got the first innings lead of 65. Had it not been for Ashton Agar, things could have been much more difficult. So coming back to today's theme, uh, close test finishes. Had it not been Ashton Agar, the match could have been uh, easily gone in England's favour. But then thanks to Ashton Agar that uh, we can include this particular test match in today's episode. Yes, Manjit. And if we look at the close test match finishes, uh, one integral part of all the test matches which we have discussed uh, till now has been the role, the crucial role played by the tail enders. Because without them, the match wouldn't have gone down the wire. Yes, and as we have discussed, the Ashes has given us very close test matches and exciting finishes over the years. Now we've talked about matches in the Ashes. I would like to mention a series as we conclude the test matches uh, in the Ashes series. Well, I am talking about the test series which was held recently in the year 2019 in England, which was drawn 2-2 with Australia retaining the Ashes. It had its close test matches, but the series was way much closer with it ending in 2-2. We've discussed one of the test matches earlier when Ben Stokes pulled off a heist. Well, there was another test match. in which australia went up to one in the series that was the fourth test match and uh, australia needed one wicket with 11 or 12 overs to go in the day and hazelwood went on to take the wicket to kick off one of the most fascinating celebrations that was uh, seen on a cricket field in england in many years so yes it was a very close test series uh, australia retaining the ashes and that was a very recent most ashes series now talking about close test match finishes uh, we would like to talk about close test finishes involving team india so when it comes to uh, close finishes the best thing you can get is first of all a tie where uh, the innings ends uh, with uh, both teams scoring the same number of runs but there is also a possibility of a match ending in a draw when uh, there is just uh, maybe a single run needed for victory but then the time is out uh, i mean the whole five days are played out and there is no more play possible so uh, this actually happened between uh, india and west indies in a test match that was played at mumbai in november 2011 and uh, it was a dream match for ravichandran ashwin he just uh, he got married a couple of weeks ago came in to play the series and uh, he scored a century and uh, took a five wicket haul in the first innings and four wickets in the second so he was on a dream roll at that 
in not just in his personal life but on on the field as well so uh, west indies uh, put on a mammoth uh, 590 runs almost 600 runs and india replied uh, with almost 480 odd but then west indies were bowled out for a relatively lower total in the second innings and it all came down to the fourth innings when india needed 243 to win and when india were on 242 the play on the final day of the match came to a close and there was no more play possible so india were left stranded with just one run needed and there because there was no further play possible then the match ended in a draw so this is how you close you can get to a test finish so that on one hand you can have a tie and then you can have a draw that uh, of course the team is painfully close to a victory but then because there is no more play possible Manjit, then ha huh. isn't it a tie huh. no it's not a tie so basically that's the fundamental difference between a tie and a draw in such a circumstances so had india been all out scores being level that would have been a tie but uh, with uh, no more play possible at scores level this is when the match ends in a draw and this is exactly what happened in this uh, 2011 test match at mumbai and manjit going back a couple of years it was a series in 2009 when south africa were touring india and they had won the first test in nagpur and the second test was to be held in kolkata well uh, this test as we can remember could have decided which way the icc test match went because india recently had won it and took it uh, in a series against sri lanka that was held earlier that year uh, now in kolkata india needed to win that test match and uh, south africa again played really well with hashim amla surviving the last day till the very end and uh, india needed one wicket and with nine balls to go harbhajan singh was able to pick morne morkal in fading light on that day in kolkata and india went on to win that test match and it was a famous victory because india went on to retain the icc test match and it was very close finish well if there is one thing uh, which is guaranteed is uh, lakshman's performance at uh, kolkata and uh, he once again performed really well at this ground 143 not out in the first innings and uh, that eventually helped india to set up a huge mammoth score like atisham mentioned and uh, it was in the final moments in the dying stages of the fifth day where harbhajan singh trapped moni mokil and uh, one great thing about test matches uh, the close test matches uh, is even if uh, you score a huge ma- mountain of runs uh, you are sometimes guaranteed entertainment because you never know how the other team will react to that huge score will they succumb to the pressure or will they fight back so uh, contrary to the belief that uh, once a huge total is scored in test matches it is a dull draw that was not the case in this test as well and uh, it was in a big match for the indian supporters abhishek you talked about vvs lakshman well he is known as very very special for a reason close test match finishes and fighting back and we don't talk about the test match between india and australia in 2010 in mohali it would be very unfair well it was again a test match in which india pulled off a great victory by one wicket and vvs lakshman was at the center of it yet again and rarely we see vvs lakshman losing his cool and temper uh, and that too against uh, his team member uh, and you felt pity for pragyan Oj- ojha and that was quite justifiable from lakshman's point of view and uh, he has again time and again uh, went on the record and said that uh, that was one thing which he was not proud of but that was in the heat of the moment that was the intensity of that match 216 against the australians that was one hell of an encounter so guys when it comes to epic test matches against australia in the uh, 2010s uh, vvs lakshman was always on the scene so be it the 2001 test match in kolkata or the 2003 test match in adelaide or this one that we are talking about right now the 2010 mohali test so vvs lakshman has always uh, taken a liking uh, for smashing it big against the australians and uh, there is this particular video on youtube and uh, of course it's uh, titled something like angry uh, cricketers at their 
uh, maybe co players or opposition or the umpires and then there is this particular clip when uh, there was almost a mix up between lakshman and oja and uh, uh, well a successful run out could have been could have meant curtains down for india uh, and lakshman of course as you mentioned abhishek we uh, hardly see lakshman or dravid losing their temper but then uh, we can give the benefit of doubt to vvs lakshman in this case because the match was so uh, crucial and uh, and india were so very close to victory that um, a small um, misunderstanding or misjudgment could have meant uh, the end of the test match and australia could have been the victors and vvs lakshman was uh, playing with a sore back on that day and maybe that was the reason for his outburst uh, at uh, pragya noja but then as we all know the two went on to um, sealed victory for india with just one wicket to spare so again that's a very very uh, narrow margin for victory and guys one interesting fact about this match was uh, ponting was left winless in india one of the best cricket captains of all time then go on to win a test series in india talking about cricket in general it is a wide perspective that cricket is thriving on the basis of tournaments such as ipl or t20 cricket but you ask core cricket fans it is test cricket which excites them it is test cricket which excites all the players as well and close test finishes are a testimony to test cricket and the purest form of the game so yes test cricket still happens to be the purest form of the game not just the encounters between teams there are battles within battles uh, mind games being played and when the media gets involved it goes over the roof the all the euphoria and the triumph the victory the disappointment and it is all worth it for not just the players uh, but also the viewers and it makes for a great viewing and a spectacle the great game of cricket that is on that note we would like to conclude i would say that it was one of the most fascinating and exciting topic for me to discuss i hope you liked this as well well if you liked it then please like our content subscribe and do share it as well thank you and much love